We all make mistakes in business and in life. The question is, how do we manage our mistakes? Let's have ourselves a pocket-sized pep talk because we don't want to overthink how to respond to a mistake and make matters worse. A pocket-sized pep talk, the podcast that can help energize your business and your life with a quick, inspiring message. Now, here's your host, Rob Jollis. All of us make mistakes. Some are bigger than others, and some are more in the public eye than others. We seem to take a perverse pleasure in building our public figures up, only to take a greater pleasure in watching them fall due to their mistakes. But a good example of this is the mess that steroids have created for so many athletes. It provides an amazing lesson on how not to say you're sorry. Matter of fact, I'm coaching someone through that mistake right now. And we see the different characters. I won't name any names all the time, trying to backpedal from their mistakes. It's not the deeds that were done that seem to be antagonizing the public. It's the ridiculous approach to extracting themselves from these mistakes that create almost an unforgiving feeding frenzy. The easiest way out of a mess like this appears to be to simply apologize. After all, that seems to be what the public has been demanding for a number of different athletes and, and public figures. Ryan Braun some years ago tried to apologize twice. So why aren't the words, I'm sorry, enough? The reality is an apology might be what the press wants, but it's not what the public wants. That's because one of the most toxic words in the English language is sorry. And the most common blunder anyone can make when faced with having to apologize is to trust your instincts and to do just that. It's a natural tendency to want to say, I'm sorry to someone when you have led him or her down. And don't get me wrong. I have no problem apologizing to my wife or my friends or my children when I've been at fault. And I'd be happy to recommend those words to any falling star if they were of any use. Unfortunately, they're not. Telling someone you're sorry is the equivalent of waving a red cloth in front of a bull. It can only make things a lot worse. Now, stay with me. One of the reasons the word sorry is of such little use that it's not what most of us want to hear. To the public, the word sorry represents an empty, useless word that appears to be more condescending than sincere. People don't want you to be sorry. People want their concerns to be acknowledged, and they want to be listened to. Rather than releasing a 900-word apology with a detailed explanation as to the reason these mistakes were made, imagine if years, some years ago, Ryan Braun had stepped up to the microphone and said, I can understand your frustration. Imagine if then he restated the issue to prove he understood our concerns. You placed a lot of faith in me, and I was not truthful regarding my action. See, this demonstrates that he had, in fact, been listening. And then, and only then, would we be ready for him to provide his version of the details. I cannot guarantee that if he were to follow this process, or any athlete since, we magically be happy with the realities of the current situation. Now, based on years of using this process and teaching it to thousands of others, I can tell you that it will dramatically help you to diffuse the emotion that continues to surround this case. Once this emotion has been diffused, we'd be willing to listen to the rest of a Lance or Orion or any number of athletes since then. And we'd be in a better position to forgive. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate and recommend it on iTunes, Outcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information on this show and Rob at Jollis.com. <laughs>